And today we are going to be talking about our Take 10 proprietary laser resurfacing combination treatment that Dr. Groff pioneered. So we're very excited about that. He's going to be telling you all the details about it. He's going to show you before and afters and videos. Um, we are also going to have a Q&A session at the end. So Dr. Groff, if you could go to the second slide. So um, before we hand this over to Dr. Groff, I just want to share a little bit about cosmetic laser dermatology, since it seems many of you are new. We are a medical cosmetic dermatology practice located in San Diego, pretty close to La Jolla. And we have over 50 lasers and devices. We have six board certified dermatologists. We're a very cutting edge treatment center. We also have a full research facility. So we're always conducting clinical trials um, because our physicians are very much involved with helping to invent lasers and new techniques and figure out the best, safest and most efficacious protocols. And then they publish them in journals and textbooks. And we also have basically more lasers and energy devices than almost any other practice in the world and um, pretty much 100% of our treatments, um, except for the esthetician ones, are completed by an MD. So that is very unique. Um, after this is over, I, we can answer any more questions about the practices you have. But now, let me tell you a little bit about your speaker today, Dr. William Groff. So next slide. So this is Dr. Groff. His beautiful face will appear in a moment, but he's a board certified dermatologist in San Diego. Dr. Groff is a laser and cosmetic surgeon extraordinaire, but today he's speaking specifically about our Take 10 and laser resurfacing. He also just so happens to be San Diego's best dermatologist. He's been voted that multiple years in a row by um, the San Diego Union Tribune and the La Jolla Light. He has over 19 years experience with lasers. He's given over 100 different lasers or lectures in different countries to physicians. And aside from the couple events in our practice, this might be his first ever webinar to, to patients, our, our prospective patients. He has 16 laser publications and published in scientific peer-reviewed medical journals to help teach other dermatologists and cosmetic surgeons around the country. And he is also an injection trainer for Allergan on products like Botox, Juvederm, and Voluma, meaning that he helps teach other physicians. So just so you guys know, our practice, we do have six board certified dermatologists. All of them are amazing. But today, um, you know, primarily, um, of course, our host is Dr. Groff. So he is going to be taking us through his incredible techniques and procedures. And please keep sending me any questions you have in the chat poll or in the Q&A if you need anything. And if not, I hope this is a successful first webinar for CL Derm. So thank you. All yours, Dr. Groff. Hey, great. Thank you, Risa. Thanks for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction. Um, so I'm glad everyone uh, was able to join us today and I hope everyone's being safe. Obviously you're sheltering in, so you're able to partake in our event today. And, we thought, you know, why not uh, try to educate uh, our patients and our potential patients about a procedure that I truly love, and it's a procedure I've been doing for 20 years, or actually perfecting for 20 years, um, and uh, it's, that's why it's one of my favorites. I think it's, it's amazing that it can really take 10 or more years off a patient's um, face without surgery, and uh, the downtime is reasonable. It's about, you know, nine, 10 days of downtime. We'll get into that more uh, in the talk. Um, let's start with, so what is Take 10? Okay, so, you know, when I was a resident, we, had, we were just, we would do one laser at a time. This is literally 20 years ago. Well, you know, through my training and working with Dr. Fitzpatrick uh, early in my career, and then uh, you know, just as years of experience are, you know, accumulated, I started to develop techniques that I thought would work better. And, you know, one of those was combining different lasers. Fortunately for us, we have, I think, at least 50 lasers here. So I can pick and choose and grab whatever laser I need to get to the best result. So, and lasers are very specific. So in other words, the laser that's good for broken capillaries doesn't really treat wrinkles. 
And the one that treats wrinkles, you know, won't treat the big blue vein that runs down the side of the face. So, or the laser that treats the brown spots doesn't really treat wrinkles. So we have to combine lasers in one treatment session with one period of downtime to get the best result. And, and that's what we do. The other thing we like to do is I tell all my patients this, if you think about it, it makes sense. I try to encourage patients to do their Botox if they're interested in doing Botox before the procedure because you want your muscles to be relaxed, not crunching while you're healing from the procedure. Um, and most patients will do that, but not everyone. And I respect anyone's choice depending on how they want to proceed as far as that's concerned. And I always tell patients, as far as fillers, don't do any fillers before the procedure. It doesn't really make sense because your skin is going to be tighter and smoother and your filler requirements may change. So why don't we wait? So let's, I'm going to play a video here. And this video kind of walks through a patient going through the procedure. And it's only a few minutes, but I think it was really well put together by our photographer. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Groff from San Diego, California, and I'm here with my patient Lola. Lola is 58, and we're going to do my favorite procedure in her today, which is laser resurfacing. We always use a combination of lasers to get the best result. So for her, we're going to use the V-Beam Perfecta laser to address broken capillaries. Next, we're going to use what's called a Q-switched Alexandria laser to ensure the brown spots are gone. And then lastly, we're going to use what's called the Luminous Ultra Pulse Encore CO2 laser, and then we're going to use the Cyton Erbium laser so we can get rid of all the lines and wrinkles, or as much as we can. If you go to look at my before and after pictures, you can go to uh, Facebook and just type in my name, Dr. William Groff, or Instagram, same thing. You're going to see that we can easily take 15 to even 20 years off some of our patients doing this approach. Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you use a fractional laser to resurface a patient, you cannot get nearly the results. And all you have to do is go online and look at the difference in the photos when we use this combination versus someone who just uses a fractional laser. This is laser number one for our transformation. We're going to use the V-Beam Perfecta to address broken capillaries in the nose, cheek, chin area. And this is the V-Beam right here. So we'll get started now. Sometimes that is the best. Another important thing is to make sure that you treat the ear. I always treat a patient's ears because it doesn't make sense to have this beautiful skin here and then have the sun damaged ears. Uh, and many doctors don't treat the ears, which I, I can't quite figure out why they would skip this important part. So now we're going to go to laser number two, which is the Q Switched Alexandria laser. One of my favorites. It's the best laser there is for individual sunspots. So you can see she has a lot of brown spots and. Um, when we do the Alexandria, you'll see each spot will get a light frost to it. Uh, so we'll get some live footage of that. And you can see right here, this is the Q-Switched Alexandria laser, which is uh, the workhorse for sunspots in our practice. surfacing part. So I'm going to be using this laser, which is the luminous ultra pulse encore, which does the majority of the work. So I'm peeling the epidermis right now, which will enable me to go a little bit deeper and get the best result possible in the lines and wrinkles. You see the patient's perfectly comfortable. During the 18 years I've been performing laser resurfacing procedures, I've found that the best way to make a patient comfortable is to use a combination of topical anesthesia, nerve blocks using Novocaine, but most importantly, IV sedation, what like a twilight sedation, where we use medication, the IV, to relax a patient, keep them very comfortable.
So I just did some work with the CO2 laser. Now I'm going to use the Cyton Erbium. This is my sculpting tool. So I sculpt away the remaining lines. There's already a big difference. You can already see how much smoother the skin is. Uh, but I'm just putting some finishing touches on here with the Erbium laser. tightening as the laser bolt. So this laser here is the best skin tightening laser or device in the market, period. So you can see that, it got instant tightening effect on the upper eyelid. You can see the skin tightening laser pulses. You can see the, sun damage, wrinkled, precancerous spots. So the beauty of this procedure, not only do you get an incredible cosmetic result, but it removes all the precancers from your skin as well. So. so you get a cosmetic benefit a So we just finished our, our full face laser resurfacing. Uh, patient did amazing. You can see during the procedure there was very little discomfort. Uh, we do everything we can to make our patients comfortable. Uh, she's just washing out her eyes because we did have a protective eye lens in there to help protect the eye from the laser. Um, so we will follow up in, uh, with her tomorrow and we'll see how she's doing. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is the patient. This is her before and after split face. Obviously, the image on, well, it's on my left side. It should be your left side too with all the brown spots. That's before. And then you can see the after. Uh, obviously, the sun damage is gone. Her skin looks tighter, smoother. The wrinkling around the mouth is dramatically reduced. Um, this is just a different angle of the same patient five months after. Now, a lot of patients ask about fractional resurfacing or the Fraxel laser, which we have probably four or five different fractional lasers in our practice, including the Fraxel lasers, all three of them. But the reason you don't get the same result is illustrated here in this photo. If you look on that square to the right, fractional means that only a fraction of the skin is addressed with the laser. So each one of those dots represents the Fraxel laser beam entering your skin. When I do the procedure that you just witnessed, I mean, you can see that I'm addressing 100% of the surface area of the skin as opposed to just a percentage. So with an aggressive fractal treatment, you'll have about a week of downtime. Uh, with the procedure I'm doing in the video, it's more like nine to 10 days, but the extra couple of days are certainly worth the dramatic difference in the result. No doubt about that. Now, I still love the Fraxel lasers. I use those mostly for scarring and acne scarring. Um, they're still uh, my treatment of choice for those things. So here's another patient. Every patient I'm gonna show you is A, my patient, and B, they've had the treatment we just witnessed uh, done by me, and it's just one treatment. So it's one treatment, one period of downtime, 
uh, you know, pretty fantastic result. In this patient, you can see the tightening of the upper and lower eyelids, the dramatic wrinkle reduction, and the overall tightening of her skin. She looks awesome. She, does, she just has a little bit of makeup on her upper lids and her, her lips, but otherwise her uh, skin is makeup free. You can see the lines on the side of her cheeks is much better. So again, no surgery, no knife, no cutting. This is all with the lasers as you saw in the video. Um, I really love the results on the eyelids. I mean, it really tightens that upper lid. You know, as we all know, with time, the upper lid starts to get heavy, it gets crepey. See the lower lid as well in this photo. Look how creepy the eye is on the right. I'm sorry, on the left in a pre photo. And then on the right, you can see the dramatic difference there. Here's a younger patient. Uh, sometimes patients are like, well, what's the youngest patient that needs this procedure? Well, <laughs> that depends how much sun damage you have. So I've done patients in their 30s. I mean, we do similar treatments for patients in their 20s if they have severe acne scarring, but for sun damage, we usually start to see patients showing up in the office in their 30s and above. And I think the oldest patient I've ever treated was probably early 90s. So, but this patient was early 40s and you can see she's never had anything done. So during our consultation, I'm like, look, why don't we do some Botox in your forehead, between your brow and around your eyes? And that's what I have, you know, I have the same thing because that will reduce the lines and then we can resurface your skin, which is gonna get rid of the lines and wrinkles through here, tighten and smooth that upper and lower eyelid skin. And the other interesting thing I did on her, if you look at her jawline right here, it's kind of wide and squared off. Well, for people who chew, chew um, or clench or grind their teeth, this muscle gets enlarged and in a female patient, it widens the base of the face which can be masculine, uh, makes the face look masculine. So what we do is we inject Botox in that muscle, which shrinks it and narrows the base of the face. And that's uh, what else, that's the other thing I did for her. Um, so these are just some different angles, uh, same patient. You can see again, the dramatic tightening of the skin of the upper and lower lid, the wrinkle reduction around the mouth. So just opening that eye up, the upper eyelid a little bit, that in itself is, this makes the patient look years younger, but natural. It's like going back in time. So sometimes our patients come in just through their eyes, which we can do. Some patients come in and just do the mouth area. So you don't always have to do the whole face. Here's an, a patient of mine, 72 years old. Uh, she's a great patient. I actually did her and her daughter in the same day. And now she's only three weeks out here, but I like to show pictures throughout the healing process. Now she's healed, but you can see she's still a little bit pink around the mouth. So question, how long is that pinkness gonna last? Well, some patients it's two weeks. I've had some patients where the pinkness doesn't go away completely for a couple of months and sometimes even longer. So, but of course, you know, you can wear makeup to cover that pinkness until it goes away. But most patients are so thrilled with their result, the tightening of the skin, the smoothing of the skin, the wrinkle reduction, and the temporary pinkness isn't an issue. And again, you can see uh, the dramatic tightening of those upper lids, the wrinkle reduction between the brow, the forehead, the brown spots. Uh, she looks awesome. And all these photos you can find uh, our website, cldurham.com. You can go to my Instagram, the practices Instagram. For my Instagram or Facebook, just type in Dr. William Groff and you can see these and a lot more actually. So I'm constantly, you know, adding new photos to my collection. Again, you can see the tightening of the upper and lower lid. That's why I like this close-up shot of the patient. And there's a really good one, which again shows that pinkness, but you know, three weeks out, she didn't even mind. She came in, she was so thrilled, gave me a big hug. She's always nice. No hugs right now though. <laughs> Maybe we can do like a virtual hug. I don't know. But uh, yeah. So you can see an example after example. It's very predictable. That's one of the things I love about this procedure It's the predictability of it. Every, every patient you can see, again, 10 years or more. 
And that's why we call it take 10. So again, look at her upper eyelids. They're heavy, they're sitting on the lashes. In the after, they're opened up. You can see the wrinkling around the mouth. I think I have a nice close up of the eyes. There you can really see it. So, you know, typically you think, oh, this patient needs upper eyelid surgery where they make an incision from here and cut you all the way out there. Well, no, I can tighten up the eyelids really nicely with this the CO2 and Erbium laser. And again, with the upper lip, the upper lip, you know, patients will come and go, hey, Dr. Groff, can you put filler in my lip, upper lip up here? And almost, I'd say 90% of the time, I say no. And that no is based on 20 years of injecting fillers. And I'm a trainer for Allergan, which makes the most popular fillers, that being all the juvenile fillers. And what I can tell you is, in my experience, trying to put filler in fine etched lines does not work well. It ends up looking weird, bulky, bumpy, all these things. Now there's exceptions to that, but like I said, 90% of the patients come and ask me, I'll, I'll tell them, I'll be like, look, save your money, save the 600, 700, $800, whatever, it depends on what filler we use. Save that and save it for a time. We'll just resurface your upper lip. Then you're going to get a result that's going to last you, I don't know, four, five, eight years. Instead of doing a filler, which is going to look, eh, okay, maybe, and last like four to six months. This doesn't make sense to me. Um, so again, just different angles of the same patient. Um, Here's another patient, she was mm, late 50s, early 60s. And you can see six months after her follow-up, zero makeup on, looks awesome. This is another one of my favorites. Now this patient, if you look more closely, look at the difference in her neck. So <clears throat> I did the resurfacing on her face like you saw in the video earlier. And that alone, now she's three weeks out, so is she a little pink? Yeah, but did she care? No, because she looks amazing. But I want you to look at her neck. Look at the tightening of the neck, look at the textural improvement just three weeks later. So what I'll do on the neck is a procedure called Thermitite, which tightens the neck, and then I run the Fraxel. This is where I do love the, the Fraxels on the neck. Neck skin is much more delicate than face skin, so you have to treat it more cautiously that's where the Fraxel repair comes in. So we tighten the skin with the Thermitite, which is a radio frequency device we have. And then I resurface the skin with Fraxel repair. This is again, a younger patient, early fifties, just wanted a refresher and I, you know, she looks great. Refreshed, not overdone. Doesn't have that, <clears throat> that weird surgically overdone look where it's too pulled. You're not gonna get that with the laser. So it's a great alternative for patients who don't want surgery. Patients, one of the questions I get, well, how about, what if I have a little bit darker skin? Well, this patient is Hispanic and you can see this is her before and three years after I treat her, she still looks absolutely amazing. Look at the difference in her upper eyelid skin. Again, the wrinkles on the mouth, she's very, very happy. And that's three years later. But oftentimes patients won't come back needing this procedure for seven, eight years. So most patients get at least a few years and more often longer than that. Here's a, another patient here who I miss because I can't see any patients in person. She's a great person, but she got a wonderful result. I was very happy. She was very happy. And um, you can see the difference around the mouth is dramatic. And again, getting rid of the sun damage. This patient flew in uh, from Northern California. She was getting prepared for her son was going to get married, and I think it was about eight months. So I resurfaced her, and she came back several months later to show me the result, and she looks awesome. Very pleased with her result, um, which reminds me we often have patients fly in from outside of San Diego. I mean, we have. Patients come in from all over the country, even internationally, and we can help set up accommodations for you. Um, and, and you can stay locally. We have hotels very close. Patients will actually walk here, have their treatment, and then go back to their hotel. So we can help accommodate any patients that are traveling from uh, outside the area. And that's what we did for her. So again, I love the result around the mouth. It's always, it's a home run around the mouth.
The other thing that it does, if you, you can look, go back and look at the photos, is it shortens the distance between the nose and the upper lip. As a patient gets older, that distance elongates. But by tightening this area with the CO2 and Erbian laser, you shorten that distance, which is more youthful. And you can certainly see that on this patient. And this flips the lip up a little bit. So you can see the upper lip gets a little, looks like it has more volume. I didn't do any fill on her. It's just from the tightening effect of the laser and turning that lip back up. Again, I love the result on the eyes. Look at the difference in her upper eyelids. The crepiness is going there tighter. She got a few millimeters of lift. The lower lid is tighter, smoother. Uh, and you can see how it, her eyes looked a little puffy before, but now it looks a lot tighter and smoother. Here's a patient just one month after. Again, a little bit pink, no makeup. She has some sunblock when you can kind of see that white sunblock look uh, from the titanium or zinc, but she looks great. Younger patient, 40s, but had those, those lip lines that uh, annoy so many patients. And again, you can see the tightening of the upper lip area, the shortening of that distance, and the lines are gone. So it looks great. So as I alluded to before, we can address the neck at the same time. Now, some patients just do their face. It's totally up to you, of course. Um, but this woman, so I resurfaced her face, but you can see, look at this area right here. So I did that thermitite procedure. Thermitite is a standalone procedure is um, for a patient, very simple. We inject numbing solution through the upper neck. I take a needle. It's about the same size needle as when you give blood, okay? I make one little poke there and usually one on either side. Through that little poke, I'm able to insert a probe that's about this long and it's about as thin as a piece of spaghetti. That probe, delivers radio frequency, which is energy, into the undersurface of the skin, which causes tissue tightening. At the same time, if a patient needs it, I'll put in a thin, it looks like a thin metal straw, and I can suck out any fat in that area. And that procedure as a standalone procedure is really just maybe two to four days of downtime because nothing's done externally. So there's no peeling, there's no crusting, there's no scab, there's none of that stuff. So. I love Thermitite as well. It's, it's again, one of my favorite procedures because the results are incredible and it's non-surgical. So if you look at this patient, look at the Titan here and look at the definition of her jawline. So it redefines the jawline. You can see the wrinkling on her neck is much improved and it tightened that area underneath her chin. So it's a wonderful combination. If you're gonna do the face and you can do the neck at the same time, let's do it. Here's another patient that I did. This is just the thermitite on the neck. So she didn't really need anything on the face. You can see younger patient, but uh, big, big difference with a non-surgical procedure, one-time procedure. Here's a patient in her 60s that just had some laxity and this is her one month after the thermitite. No cutting again, no scars. And uh, she looks wonderful. Here's one, a patient of mine. These are all, of course, yeah, my patients. This one's six weeks out, and you can see the change in that angle, you know, from a blunt angle to a sharper angle. And the beauty of this is, is that that will continue to tighten and look better for at least six months. And she's only six weeks out, and she looks much better. Here's a, a combination patient. What I mean by that is I did a take 10, resurfacing on her face, like you saw in the video. And then on the neck, I did the thermitite. And you can see again, look at the change in the angle from an angle like this to, and look at the texture of her skin. So tighter, smoother, but looks natural. Doesn't look overdone. Still a little pink here and there, but not bad. So, now this procedure, I showed a lot of women and that's you know because women probably make up 90% of our patients, but certainly men have similar issues, particularly in the neck. So I see a lot of men too, they're probably 15% of my patient population. But this guy, you can see I did his neck six weeks later, looks dramatically better. He flew in from, uh, I think it was Mexico City. 
And uh, again, one of those uh, patients that travel, which we can help with accommodations if necessary. And San Diego is a wonderful place to visit, as anyone who's ever been here knows. So you can come, you can do a little work, and maybe you can have some fun while you're here. <laughs> Now here's a great, I love this picture because this is only three days after. So before three days after the thermi type procedure, look at the definition of her jawline, look at the angle and the tightening of this area here, and you can't even see the entry points where I entered her skin. So again, it heals without any residual marks. Same patient, different angle. You can see maybe she's got a little bit of bruising there, but not. Again, this is patients in her 40s. Now, I have patients for this therapy type procedure. I have patients coming in their 20s because there is a genetic component to sub, you know, some called submental, but fat under the chin. I mean, you can be in great shape and still have it. So I have patients that are 20s, 30s, uh, come in all the time. The millennials really like this procedure. Oh, again, we, we saw this woman's picture before. It's combination resurfacing therapy type. And just another thermi type patient to show you again the consistency of the result. There's one that's seven weeks out. So I think it's important when you as a patient are trying to figure out well, where should I go for my procedure? So I tell patients, look, if I was going to get a procedure done, what would I do? So I would want to go to a doctor and I want to see a lot of before and after pictures. How else can you decide? I mean, bedside of manner is important too, but in the end, you want to make sure their work is good. So I think it's really important um, to see lots of before and after pictures. And that's why one of my passions is collecting and adding before and after pictures to my photo gallery. So this patient's another combination patient where I resurfaced the base and then did the thermi tight on the neck. And that's my wife, Stacy, and my two daughters, Jenna and Piper, who are definitely bigger than this now. That picture is a few years old. <laughs> anyway, um, so I guess, Risa, now we can open up to some questions. I can't hear Risa for some reason. Okay, sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, I can hear you now. Okay, good. So sure. thank you so much, Dr. Groff. That was amazing. It's, um, I've seen those pictures before, but it's still so incredible to see them over and over. We have a ton of questions that have come in. So um, let me start sharing them with you so you can answer. Um, so the first one, uh, let's see, is I am wondering if radio frequency might be better than Fraxel for skin tightening on the neck? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, it's a great question because they do two different things. So if I was looking at purely just tightening, in most patients, I would definitely go with the Thermitite. Um, but if they're looking for that textual improvement in lines, wrinkles, sun damage, then I would go with Fraxel. But that's why, again, combinations are key. So. A lot of patients I'll combine both technologies if that's what's needed, so. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, no, second question, I am looking for a solution to my saggy jowl. <clears throat> the doctor I saw in Sacramento suggested the halo laser, however, they could only provide clear and brilliant. After one procedure, I didn't get any improvement in my jowl. What if I, what I did have were patches of raw flaking skin that revealed my flesh Skin and several areas in my face, does this mean I'm not a candidate for lasers? Definitely not. I, I'm sure with our variety of lasers, we can find something that works, but um, this is one of those stories that always frustrates me because I don't like dishonesty. So when I hear that someone told you that clear and brilliant, which we have here, or halo would tighten your jowls, I mean, that just upsets me because it's flat out not true as you learn, unfortunately. So one of the things I pride in, pride myself in is that I'm always gonna be honest with you. I can't tell you how many patients I turn away or say no, but I want happy patients. You know why? Because that's the right thing to do. But at the end of the day, I feel good about what I've done for the day. And if I have to say no, then I say no, because I want patients to be happy and I wanna do what's right and what works. So if it's not gonna work for you, I'm not gonna do it. And anyone who's been a patient might know that to be true. Um, so clear and brilliant is a very, it's probably one of the lightest treatments you can do. 
for your skin. It does help build new collagen, elastic tissue over time, but it, it would never, you could do a hundred clear brilliance and you wouldn't even get close to the results that, you know, with the CO2 and RVM laser that I showed you earlier. Um, but for the jowl specifically, some things to think about would be that thermi type procedure. Sometimes filler placed along the jawline can help with that. I mean, obviously I have to see in person, but. Yeah. Thank you so much. So um, let's see, just so everyone knows, we have eight minutes left to answer as many questions as we can. And then after that, Dr. Groff is of course always available for a virtual consultation. You guys can schedule on our website and he will be coming back um, for an additional webinar just for Q&A. So I'll announce that date at the end as well. So for the next question, um, how would you treat a Fitzpatrick four skin tight? Uh, would I have to use melanin inhibitors prior to the treatment? And you know, there's some questions also about all of skin tones in general. Yeah, so I did show you a couple of patients with darker you know, skin types, Fitzpatrick three, four, it can definitely affect my choice in lasers. It, it depends what your goals are and what kind of um, damage there is to the skin. I mean, of course, what you see in darker skin types is they don't tend to get the wrinkling around the mouth as deeply or uh, they don't get the crepiness as young as like fair skin patients do. So as far as if it was an issue of tightening the skin, then we can proceed with the exact same strategy, which would be using the uh, Thermitite. Um, so uh, we definitely have options and that's why we have so many lasers. I mean, we have lasers that I can treat the lightest skin or the very darkest skin. So if, if, if there's technology that's gonna work, we have it. Okay, great. So a lot of people are asking questions about costs, like costs for exactly what some of these patients did and average price range. If you want just kind of the eye area, I know it's very specific for each person, but maybe you can address it generally. I generally, I mean, my job as the physician, uh, and when patients ask me in the office, I say the same thing. My job as the physician is to get you the best result, worry about what I have to do to get there. So the pricing is usually decided by my medical assistants, depending on what uh, lasers we use, um, if we're on the face, face, neck, you know, it just depends. Um, so, but let's just say you're going to do a full face. It's going to be, you know, at, from the four, uh, I'd say a few thousands and up depending. So for a team, okay. if you want to, you know, if, for those patients that you saw with the dramatic results, they're at least starting at four and up. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, um, another one, let's see, can these laser treatments help with under eye circles? They definitely can. And if you go back and review uh, the photos, you're going to see tighter skin, you're going to see smoother skin, you're going to see less bagginess or um, heaviness to the lower lids. You're going to see that the darkness to the eyes is much improved with the, uh, the Take 10 or the laser resurfacing. Um, now, sometimes patients need volume there too. And pretty much, if you look at almost anyone's face that's in their 30s or above, there's volume loss under the eyes. So. It could be a combination approach, but the laser resurfacing definitely helps. Okay, perfect. So let's see, here's another one. Um, the lasers to the eyes, how do we know it won't affect your vision or your eye health in the future? That is an excellent question. Well, lasers have been around to some degree for, oh my gosh, it's 40 years at least. And in my personal experience, and I think I mentioned earlier, I, you know, I've been doing laser treatments on one patient's eyelids for 20 years, and I've never seen a single issue. So there's a ton of clinical data showing that with proper eye protection, there's no risk to the eyes, no long-term or short-term. But that's okay. And it's important to go somewhere where there's experience. Experience matters, right? So this is what we do every day. So we'll make sure it's safe and effective for you. Okay, so two, um, let's see. Is the Luminous Encore a classic CO2 laser? Can you talk more about it? And no, no, it's not. I know what they're referring to. So if you go back in time, the, the Luminous Ultra Pulse Encore is what I consider the Ferrari of CO2 lasers. Um, and that's why one of the tools I use to get those results, right? So but prior to the luminous, there was older lasers that fired different 
Spot sizes were different and um, there was more complications. Uh, so, and some doctors still use those older lasers. So, um, you know, if you're going to see a doctor and you're interested in laser resurfacing, it's certainly reasonable to ask specifically what brand, and I have no connection to Luminous. They don't pay me, I'm not a speaker for them, but um, it's perfectly reasonable uh, to ask what lasers they're gonna use. And then again, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So I would wanna see at least 20 before and after pictures of patients that that doctor's treated and uh, before I made my decision. If they can't show me 20 before and afters, then they either haven't done enough or they're not getting good results. That's my opinion. Okay, um, let's see. What is the downtime with Thermitite and lipo on the neck? The Thermitite with micro lipo is just a few days. Again, everything's done under the skin. So you may get a little bit of bruising. A lot of patients get no bruising actually because we use lidocaine with epinephrine. Epinephrine has the effect of making the blood vessels squeeze down so there's no um, bleeding, okay, underneath the skin, which is what a bruise is. Um, there may be some swelling, but I have patients go back to work in three, certainly four days. Okay, um, so let's see. Let's just do one more question here. There's so I mean, many. I'll do as many in. as you want. I don't mind answering. It's not like I got somewhere to be, but what Perks. <laughs> well, we have to wrap this up, but um, let's see. Can this be performed on the neck and the chest? Well, as I alluded to earlier, the neck, the face, you can really treat with stronger lasers safely if you know what you're doing. The neck, you definitely have to drop the intensity down. So what I found through you know, all the lasers we have and all the time I've been doing lasers, is that the best combination, if you want to tighten, improve texture, is going to be using the Thermitype with the Fraxel Repair. That's a generalization. Every patient's different, but you cannot treat the neck and chest with the same intensity as the face. But that's, again, that's why we have 50 plus lasers here. We have lasers that I specifically will use on the chest and neck because of their effectiveness, but they're not as intense, so to speak. Okay. Um, this is a good last question too. Will this tighten as good as InstaLift or someone said um, the vase? Um, InstaLift, which we have here, um, I personally think the laser is way better. I would, I mean, if again, ask for photos, show me 10 pictures of InstaLift and then ask for 10, you know, and you'll see what, why I'm saying that. Uh, if anyone says it's better, well then ask them to show you 10, 20 pictures of patients they've done it on. In my experience with InstaLift, it falls way short of what the CO2 laser can do in general. Okay, great. All right, well, we're gonna wrap here. Um, there are a couple additional questions if you would like to- um, I'll answer them if we have time, I can do it. Okay, if I can change you to be the host, perhaps. Um, let me make you the host. Okay, so Dr. Groff, can you see the questions now? No, but I'm gonna have Paul come over here and see if he can help me out. Stop share. Okay. Okay, while we're trying to figure this out, I do wanna remind everyone that this, this entire thing was recorded and we will be sending this out to everyone. We also, um, We'll have Dr. Groff available for an open Q&A. Um, his open Q&A is scheduled for Thursday, April 23rd. I know that seems very far away. Um, so you're welcome to come to that, but you're also welcome anytime to schedule a virtual consultation with Dr. Groff. Um, our in-person consultations are normally complimentary, but for virtual, there is a small charge, but it will be applied towards your future treatment when you come to us anytime for the remainder of the year. So we hope you feel like it's worthwhile. You can send some photos ahead of time so Dr. Groff can really give you a good personal consultation. Um, we of course also um, can answer questions over email or um, you can call us. We have a staff here to answer the phone. I hope you follow Dr. Groff on Instagram, um, as well as the practice, uh, both Instagram and Facebook. I posted those links in the chat and we'll continue to, we'll send them out again if I can. Um, and otherwise, uh, is, 
Paul there now so you can see some of the Q&A. So here, okay, I, I can see the questions now. So um, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna let you wrap this up with everyone and okay. I'm gonna sign off right now. And um, thank you all so much for tuning in. And don't forget that tomorrow we have an open Q&A with Farzane. Monday, a whole presentation like today on neck and jawline with Dr. Fabi, and then a whole um, number of more from all of our experts over the next three weeks, every single day at noon, we will be hosting a webinar to try and educate and inform and support you all from home as much as possible. So um, thank you. All right, awesome. Thanks, Risa. So here's a question. Some older people that get facial lasers start to look fake, very overly smooth, and just not real. What lasers cause that, and does this have the potential to do that? Um, that's a great question, and I've seen that myself. Those patients are usually ones that have been treated with that older technology, or they've just been over-treated. So, again, I hate to go back to this, but that's where experience matters. And, you know, you have to go to someone who won't overdo you and they have the right technology. So it's a combination of experience and technology that'll uh, avoid that. Let's see, here's another question. Um, does this work for horizontal lines on your neck? Do you have before and afters? Yeah, um, you may have come in late, but if you, again, go to Instagram or Facebook or to our website and you look at pictures of patients that I've done Thermitite on, patients that have resurfaced, if I've done their neck, you can definitely see a difference in the horizontal lines on the neck. So yeah, we can definitely help you with that. Next question. Can men do this if they have a dark beard? Well, none of the lasers that I use for the take 10 will affect uh, hair growth. We have different lasers for hair removal. The lasers for the take 10 do not affect uh, hair in any way. How much does Thermotide with slight light bulb under the chin in early 40s? Um, I think it generally starts 3,500 to 4,000 and, and up possibly, depending on the amount of work that's needed and so forth. Sometimes less. Again, the best way to find out is to come in and see me and we'll, we'll figure that out in person. But sometimes, uh, yeah. Do any of these lasers melt underlying fat in the jawline and nasolabial folds? <clears throat> well, no, I, none of these lasers will melt fat in this area. The jawline, we can target the jowl area with the thermitite. So the thermitite is really going to, it defines that jawline. And then if, it, if you have fullness here or fullness here, it can address that as well. But it doesn't melt um, fat per se. Uh, and we don't go into this area at all with those devices. I mean, the thermopay laser is surfacing. I, of course I do. Uh, let's see. Does Encore have the same downtime as classic CO2? No, it's much less. So my average patient, and there's going to be patients that are less and more, but the average patient's nine to 10 days until you're completely healed and look great, you are gonna have some degree of pinness to your skin, but that's generally when you can start wearing um, makeup again and sunblock and things like that. How do I watch the video once it's over? Well, Reese is gonna post it on our website. Uh, that's one way. I'm also gonna, at some point, post it on my, I have a YouTube channel. If you just go to YouTube and type in Dr. William Groff, you can actually uh, watch the video that was in this presentation and uh, the one that showed the take 10 procedure from start to finish on that woman, that's on my YouTube channel. So there's a lot of great videos on my YouTube, YouTube channel. Just type in Dr. William Groff and you'll see them on YouTube. Oh, hi, Lori. <laughs> Does Thermitate ever cause loosening of the neck skin? No, I've never seen that. But again, that can be um, dependent on who's doing it, I guess. But I've never had that problem. What if you have little to no neck fat? Well, again, if you look back at my photos, not everyone has neck fat, neck fat. Some just have laxity. So it's good for just laxity as well, the thermotype. You also perform thermage or all therapy. Yes, we have both of those technologies. So one of the things I love about practicing here is that we have all the technologies, so we're not biased towards one or the other. 
I mean, I guess if you went somewhere and they only had a thermage, they're probably going to tell you that that's the best thing for you. Well, it may not be. Some patients it will be. Others would benefit more from all therapy, and others would benefit more from Thermitite with micro lipo or Thermitite alone. So that's where it's up to uh, the doctor to make the decision. For me, you would meet with me one on one. I do your consultation. I do your treatment. I don't hand off my patients to anyone, period. So if I, you're meeting with me, I'm treating you, whether it's the simplest procedure I do or the most complicated, obviously. Uh, let's see, what else? What's your take on radio frequency for thick tightening of the skin if you're in your 50s? Well, the thermitite's radio frequency, and that's, for most patients, gonna be my treatment of choice. Do you treat Asian skin fit Fitzpatrick four or more with erbium versus CO2? Um, possibly, I'd have to see your skin. I'm, I, I might go fractional in that case. Again, Asian skin in general, and I think I have at least 10 publications on the treatment of Asian skin specifically, um, they don't usually get the lines and wrinkles here. Uh, it's more like brown spots and some subtle textural change, so a different approach for that. How about, how long does the redness or pinkness to the skin last from the take time procedure? That will last anywhere from a couple of weeks to possibly two months or even slightly longer. So, but it gets better each week until it's gone. So occasionally I have a patient who has more stubborn pinkness, but we have ways of making it go away faster in most cases. I think I've answered all the questions. Let me look. If anyone doesn't have any more questions, I guess we're going to sign out and then we'll have this video available on the website uh, if you want to review it or refer a friend. And, um, uh oh, looks like two patients raised their hand. They don't know what that means. Huh. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here, Paul. Mm. These questions over here. Here's one from a patient. I'm in my late 20s and I have very dull skin, lots of acne scarring, redness, and discoloration. I still have breakouts. Could I still be a candidate for laser treatment if I still have breakouts? Um, in general, we like to get your acne under control. Now, we all still get acne, even I'll get one or two lesions occasionally, but um, Depends on how bad your active acne is. So, but I, I will uh, do lasers on patients who have active acne. It just depends how severe. This patient's saying that she has a lot of volume loss in her cheeks and that she shows a lot of lines because of that. Do you feel I would need to take 10 and filler to plump the area? My Botox does not work much around the eyes because of the volume loss in the cheeks. Well, it's definitely a possibility that you could still need volume. I mean, the resurfacing does a wonderful job at getting rid of lines, wrinkles, sun damage, and tightening the skin, but volume loss is volume loss, so you may still need to replace volume. Maybe it'll be less after the laser, though. The thing about Botox not working, I mean, I wonder because there's reasons why Botox sometimes doesn't work. If the place that you're going over dilutes it, so with Botox, Botox comes in a vial about this big, and it has a freeze-dried powder on the bottom. You have to add saline to that vial to make Botox injectable, okay? So the, the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to inject two and a half cc's into the vial of Botox. But some places, to increase profitability, will inject five, 10 cc's. So that's one thing that I see that causes Botox not to work. The other thing is um, sometimes it's placement, um, not placing in the proper area, of course. And the other thing is the number of units. The eyes typically need 12 units on each side. If someone's trying to only use six, of course, it's not going to work as well. Let's see if I have any other questions. I don't want to leave anyone hanging. I'm looking. I don't see any other questions unless I'm missing it, so I apologize. Let me double check over here. 
Do you do fat grafting? I personally do not. How bad is the pain after the treatment? That's a good question. I'd say 90% of my patients or higher have no pain. So I'll see you the next day usually, and they'll come in pain free. Now, do you look beat up? Yeah, of course. But um, it's very rare that I have to give anyone anything prescription wise for pain. Um, how soon after the take 10? Hmm, how soon can you have a take 10 following a fractional CO2 laser? Eh, I think you could do it six weeks after for sure. And I've done that on some patients that have had fractional CO2 and they're disappointed, then they come see me and uh, we do a take 10 approach. How many post-op appointments are there? <clears throat> well, I guess as many as it takes, but <laughs> generally in the first, let's say 10 days, I'll see you mm, two to three times and then they get farther out after that. So say you're all healed at 10 days, then I'll generally have you come back two weeks after. Now, not everyone can, you know, I have a lot of patients that fly in. So a lot of times they'll just send me photos or we can uh, video chat, things like that. So. I like to try to make it easy for patients if I can. I'm off work and would it be possible to do it soon or are you closed? Well, unfortunately right now we're closed, um, but we're hopeful that maybe uh, in the next, I don't know, it's probably gonna be the beginning of May it's looking like, but the second that we can do it safely for our patients, um, following, you know, governmental guidelines would definitely be open. Does anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> well, I want to thank you all for uh, being here. I miss seeing my patients. You know that, you know, my patients, we have a great rapport and I, I miss seeing you guys. And if you have any questions, maybe email or uh, you can call the practice because we have staff here, light staff, you know, just to be available for you guys. So uh, take care. I'm going to sign off.